It's 2 a.m. and a 26-year-old man is rushed to the emergency department after a bad car accident. His injuries are very severe and he's bleeding internally. A code omega is called, alerting the lab that a patient is bleeding uncontrollably and requires a massive transfusion protocol. The blood lab jumps into action, sending one package of blood after another to the emergency department. Minutes matter, and having the right type of blood available can mean the difference between life and death. Hey guys, I'm Siobhan. And I'm Mark. And we're both doctors who order blood products all the time. Today, we're going to find out exactly where that blood comes from, starting with donating our own blood and following it through the process. First, I fill out a screening questionnaire to make sure I'm eligible to donate. It asks about my health, medications, travel history. Now, I get my hemoglobin checked to make sure I have enough red blood cells to donate. This is so cool. Using only a tiny sample of blood, you can get your results in seconds. It's similar to the ones that people with diabetes use to check their blood sugar. Very good. Woohoo! Okay, fantastic. It looks like I'm good to go. How do you feel? A little bit nervous, but good. Good. I feel like everyone's so welcoming. I'm like so excited to have first donors, so you feel kind of, you feel really good. Mm -hmm. They also collect blood samples to test for infections and make sure my blood is safe for donation. And I love how they do this. See how they're collecting the blood in the small bag first? This way, when they're changing the tubes, it doesn't move the needle in my arm, so I can't feel it at all. By far the easiest blood draw I've ever had. And there it goes. I thought the donation process was gonna take a lot longer, but once we got going, it only took six minutes to give a whole pint of blood. Wow, there it is, my own blood. I've seen a lot of bags like this, but never filled with my own blood. And it's still even warm to touch. Honestly, I didn't expect this moment to feel so meaningful, knowing that my blood is going to help someone else who needs it more than I do. Now it's Mark's turn, and he's gonna try to donate his blood faster than me. A little friendly competition. So the time to beat is six minutes. I see him squeezing furiously. He's trying to beat my time, doesn't he? <laughs> what he doesn't know is he's already lost. I already donated all my blood by this point. <laughs> it's not a race. It's just about getting to the finish line. I'm learning that there's been a serious loss of donors recently. First with the pandemic as everyone's routines changed, and then as people started going on vacation and forgetting to come in. And now with the flu season, there's been another drop in donations. It's three o'clock on a Tuesday, and currently there is nobody in here donating, and apparently usually it's full. Aha! See you in three months. See ya. Bye. Bye. <laughs> now our blood gets packaged and shipped off to the centralized lab for processing. So that's where we're heading next. So I just arrived at the Canadian Blood Services production facility. This is where we're going to figure out what happens to our blood, how is it processed, and then delivered to the hospitals where it's being used. I'm actually more excited than I expected. You really never get to see this. <laughs> Walking into the control room, I'm immediately struck by how enormous this place is. I hear the hum of machines, lab equipment I've never seen before, and there's blood hanging everywhere. It's like a blood factory. So the blood that I donated is called whole blood because it's the whole mixture of red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and plasma. And then here, they start to divide it up so that it can be given to the patients as needed. Everything about blood processing and storage is time sensitive. So as donations arrive, the bags get tagged with colorful stickers to indicate which ones should be processed first. Whole blood is placed in the centrifuge, which spins incredibly fast, causing the blood to separate into three parts based on their density. Plasma, the liquid part of the blood, is on top. The buffy coat, which contains white blood cells and platelets, is in the middle. And the red blood cells are on the bottom. I'll explain what each of these are in a bit. So right here, the unit is being pressed. The red blood cells are going to the right. 
it's filtering out the plasma to the left there. That one blood transfusion has the potential to save three lives. This is incredible. You learn about all of this stuff in medical school and residency. I know it from a textbook, but I've never actually seen it happening. My mind is blown. I love this. Okay, let's start with the red blood cells, the ones that deliver oxygen throughout your body. First, any white blood cells that may be mixed in need to be removed. So this process is called leukoreduction. This is when the white blood cells are filtered out of the blood. This reduces the risk of blood transfusion reactions. See how they're creating segments of tubing that still contain blood? These segments are used by hospital blood labs to run further tests without having to open up the bag and risk contamination. And there you've got it, red blood cells to go. All right, now onto platelets, which are found in the Buffy coat. These are the cells that help form blood clots and stop bleeding. You may be surprised to learn that it takes four blood donations to gather enough platelets to treat one patient. And they combine them in a way that I didn't expect. They take one bag of plasma and four bags of Buffy coat and connect them end to end like a train. This train of blood bags is hung up with the plasma at the top. Now for my favorite part. The seal is opened, allowing the plasma to flow from one bag of Buffy coat to the next, washing them out. Now you have one big bag filled with plasma and Buffy coat, which contains lots of platelets. The final step is separating out those precious platelets by spinning it in the centrifuge. And last but not least is plasma. So far, we've been talking about the cells in the blood. Plasma's different though. It's all about the blood proteins. One group of powerful proteins are immunoglobulins, the antibodies that fight viruses and bacteria. As a rheumatologist, I often use immunoglobulins to treat patients with severe autoimmune diseases. And it takes thousands of donors to create this life-saving therapy. And that's just one of many products that comes from plasma. Meanwhile, just down the hall from the processing area is a highly regulated lab where every blood donation is tested for infections like hepatitis, HIV, and syphilis. There's also a huge emphasis on quality control during the processing itself. Here you can see row after row of culture bottles, testing the recently combined platelets for any bacterial contamination. Can you believe that all of this is because people have voluntarily donated blood? Like without people donating, it just wouldn't be possible. With each of these bags, I see goodness and kindness of humanity. It's actually a really hopeful place. And this is happening on an enormous scale, with at least a thousand units of whole blood getting processed each day at the center. Holy moly, that's cold in there. <laughs> so I've learned that this is a very much on-demand service. So if you're at the hospital, there's a code Omega, and they need more blood at the hospital, well, they're gonna call these guys and they're gonna start boxing it up and ship it stat to the hospital. So even though I order blood frequently for patients, I was surprised to learn that roughly every minute of every day, a Canadian needs blood. Whether it's because of an accident, an operation, fighting cancer, an autoimmune disease, or childbirth, odds are that someone you know will need blood in the future. And this is a gift that almost all of us can give. So check with your local blood bank to see if you're eligible and make an appointment to donate. So when you really stop and think about how many people, how many steps are involved in making sure that someone can safely get a blood transfusion, it's absolutely mind boggling. It's crazy to think that my red blood cells are probably shuttling oxygen around someone else's body right now. Right? And my platelets are probably stopping someone from bleeding. Well, wanna make this a regular thing? You know it. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd encourage you guys to consider donating too. So thank you so much to the Canadian Blood Services for making this possible and letting us see a little bit behind the scenes. And be sure to like and subscribe and that way we'll see you in the next video. So, bye, bye for, for now. now. <laughs>